Heights Baptist Church. And this is our midweek service. As always, we pray to be a blessing to you. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed opportunity to bring forth the word of God. We know that it is alive and it gives life to those that truly search for it. And Father, we pray that that would be so during this broadcast, that those that watch it, Lord, may their hearts be touched. And if there's anyone without Christ, may today be the day of their salvation. We'll give you praise for all that you do, Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. We're going to begin by praising the Lord as always. Today we're going to start with a hymn, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story, number 508. <laughs> This is found in number 398. It's a beautiful hymn. The first time I heard this was when I was in Bible college many, many years ago. I would say in 1973. Can you imagine? Fill my cup, Lord. scripture reading. We're studying the book of Proverbs, and uh, we're going to read a couple verses in the book of Proverbs. I'd like to draw your attention, please, to Proverbs 15. Proverbs, let's see, uh, for Proverbs 18, I'm sorry. Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs 18, 21. 
Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I'd like to read another verse in another chapter. If you go to chapter 13, Proverbs 13 and verse 3, Proverbs 13 and 3, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll use this message for your honor and glory, that hearts will be touched. May we examine our own lives in the balance of the scriptures. And if we err, Lord, help us to ask your forgiveness. We need to walk more circumspectly with you. Help us to live in holiness. And this has a lot to do with how we speak and how we are tempted to fall into anger. Father, help us to get anger under control and to control our speech. Lord, I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As you study the Proverbs, you'll notice that throughout the chapters, they speak of many different themes. And it seems like the only way that you can study a theme thoroughly is going throughout the Proverbs and conglomerating the verses that deal with that certain subject together. And this is what I did. The Lord, as I was reading Proverbs, the Lord touched my heart. Proverbs has a lot to say about the control of anger and the control of the tongue. And when anger is not controlled, permanent damage to lives can happen. Lives and families, relationships, friends, long friends can be broken up because of lack of control of anger and, and the way we speak. And also the person themselves that commit these sins, they harm their own being. The devil can take advantage of the situation and bring chaos in our life and in the chaos in the lives around us when this occurs. Why does this happen? Because Satan is the author of confusion. He's the author of confusion. He delights in bringing confusion and obstruction and destroying the home and family and, and relationships. And we saw this very clearly. If I'll bring your attention again, and uh, I, I really like this verse. It really has a lot of meaning. I dry, dry, bring your attention to Proverbs 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in, are in the power of the tongue. That's a, that's a very heavy phrase there. If, if we look back at Proverbs 13, the one that you, we just read, <clears throat> Proverbs 13 and verse 3, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destructions. So we find here that Proverbs, or these words of, of uh, wisdom, speak out against the wrong use of our language and how we should control our anger. There are many warnings throughout the book of Proverbs. When you read it, I just conglomerated many of these verses together so we can study them in topic form. If you look in Proverbs 15 and verse 18, Proverbs 15 and verse 18, it says here, a wrathful man stirreth up strife. Now, wrathful is the old English terminology for an angry man, a man who does not have his anger under control. A wrathful man stirreth up strife. The word strife is a conflict or bitter disagreement. And so it says here, it's a wrathful man stirreth up strife, he brings up conflict, but he that is slow to anger appeases strife. 
And so we find here there are warnings against those that cannot control their anger. We find this also in the very next chapter. In Proverbs 16, Proverbs 16, verses 28 and 20 through 30. Proverbs 16, verses 28 through 30. A froward man soweth strife. I looked up for the word froward because these are words that aren't used in our uh, daily vernacular or our vocabulary. Froward is a person difficult to deal with, a very argumentative person. That's a froward person. A froward man or an argumentative man, a man difficult to deal with, soweth strife. And, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things. Notice that word again. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. To pass. And so we find here a person with a hot temper or a short fuse, like we say normally today, is not going to be blessed. Is not going to be blessed. But we find in the scriptures also, it says just the opposite of a person that seeks to hit, get his anger under control. You know, even the most docile person out there has anger issues on occasions. We all do. I do, even as a pastor. But the Bible says if we can control our anger and we can control our words, we're on the path to blessings. Look what it says. I'd like to bring your attention to chapter 14. Chapter 14. We're jumping back and forth because I've conglomerated these verses so that we can understand them better in reference to the topic. In Proverbs 14, verse 29, Proverbs 14 and verse 29, he that is slow to wrath or slow to anger is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. In other words, things are going to fall apart. Things are not going to go right, right? In chapter 16 and verse 32, I draw your attention there. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So the Bible says very clearly, if you can control your anger, you've got great power in your being. Amen? You have great power in your being. Wow. That's the type of person I want to be. Amen? Now, what can we do? What can we do when strifeful situations happen? And they do. Every week in our family or in our fellowship or on the job or even in churches, there are situations that might bring strife. What can we do? Well, the Bible is very clear on that also. I found a verse that tells us what to do. In Proverbs 17 and verse 14, so Proverbs 17 and verse 14. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. Now, what's it saying here? What do we have to do when uh, strife begins? Drop it. If you see there's a situation uh, where strife is, drop it. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, sometimes there's a time even in your home as a husband and wife where you feel that there's a tension there. I think it's time to go and sit on the veranda a little bit. Amen? Go out and let things cool off. Amen? Let things cool off. And after things have cooled off, then maybe come back in and you can deal with the subject you're trying to deal with. So if you see that strife bitter disagreement or a conflict is coming on, drop it. Find a way to drop it so that you can cool off because if you're hot-headed and you're going to try and deal with a problem, you're not going to find a solution. A solution will not be found. Now, there are people that love to argue. 
Have you found people in your life that love to argue? It seems like they, they feed on arguments, right? They're looking for an argument. Well, the Bible says that too. If we look in chapter 17, as I was studying this very interesting subject, in verse 19 and 20, uh, chapter 17, verse 19 and 20, he loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart, or like we said, a divisive heart or an argumentative heart, findeth no good. And he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. So these people that like to find an argument and they're seeking something to argue about, these people are driven by anger. They have an angry spirit. And that's not good. I don't like to be around people that seem like they just, they're breathing angry all the time. They get up angry and they go to bed angry. And everything they do, they find some, something to argue with. Do you know people like that? I hope I'm not speaking to someone. If I am, if I'm speaking to someone, you better get right. Because you're not a blessing. You're a curse to those that are around you. Say, Pastor, I don't like the way you're talking. Well, I don't like the way you, you act either. Amen? Nobody likes the way you act. And so these people are driven by anger. They have an angry spirit. Even their language reveals who they are. The way they say the words, they come out uh, like rough all the time. Now, the Bible says that God calls these people that do not control their anger and that are rough in their language, they don't control their language, God calls them, listen to this, fools. Fools. Now that's a very heavy word in scripture, amen? In chapter 18, verse 6 and 7, chapter 18, 6 and 7, a fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Listen to that. Those are very heavy words. And so God calls these people that do not get their anger under control or their language under control because I think one goes with the other. God calls them fools. And as I read and studied this most interesting subject, the word of God itself, the Proverbs itself, calls these people ungodly. Ungodly people that do not have control of their anger of their wrath, and do not have control of their language, they are ungodly. I don't care if they say they're saved. If you're saved, you're an ungodly saved person. You need to get right with the Lord. In Proverbs 16, verse 17. Proverbs 16 and verse 17. It says here, uh, let's see, am I right here? 16, 27, I'm sorry. Chapter 16 and verse 27. I'm sorry. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. And so the ungodly man diggeth up evil. He finds he doesn't find anything good to say. He's always got something contentious to say. Always something that, that stirs up the pot, so as to speak. The Bible also calls the person that deals with his anger and that is, is cautious with his words, God calls that person a wise man. I don't know about you, but I want to be wise in the eyes of God. Amen? I want to be a wise person in the eyes of God. If we look at chapter 16 and verse 23 and 24 now, chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, it says here, the heart of the wise teacheth his mouth, and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. I don't know about you, but everything in those two verses seems pretty good to me. Amen? I don't know if you, have you ever had 
honey from a honeycomb. Mm -hmm. I remember they used to sell honey in jars and it had a little piece of the honeycomb in the jar. Mm -hmm. You remember that? And man, that honey was really sweet. It was really sweet. Now, this is what the Bible says compares the words of a wise man. The, like that, those things that come from a honeycomb. Notice also chapter 15. Go back a chapter. Chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. A soft answer turneth away wrath or evil or, or anger. But grievous words stir up anger. If someone says an ill word to you and you say an ill word back, what's it going to be? Bring. It's going to bring an ill situation. Amen. The situation is going to be stirred up. But if someone gives you, uh, barks at you a little bit, you know, sometimes you're talking to a person and the person goes, Rawr! barks at you. What should you do? Bark back? No, you're going to have a dog fight. Amen. But it says here, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Find something good to say, even though it's hard at that moment, right? Notice what it says in verse 2. The tongue of the wise, notice, God considers those that deal with their tongue and try to control their tongue, wise people. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Jump down to verse 4, please. Verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. And jump to verse 28 in the same chapter. Proverbs 15, 28. Proverbs 15, 28. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. Oh, I wish I had done that a whole lot more. Amen. Study. Think about it before you answer. You know, we put our, I put my nine and a half foot and that's how big my shoe is. I put my nine and a half foot in my mouth when I don't think before I answer. And this is what it says here. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. And so the Bible calls the person that uh, seeks to have control of his tongue and control of his answer, God calls that person, either it be a man or a woman, a wise person, a righteous person. Good things shall come to the person, man or woman, that learns to control his or her anger and mouth. Amen. And oh, if we could get that in our marriages. Amen. You know, the closer you live with someone, the more friction you might see because you're living together with them. Eh? And so we need to learn to keep our anger under control and our words also. Notice what it says in Proverbs 12. Let's jump back a couple chapters here. Proverbs 12, 14. Proverbs 12, 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. In other words, those that speak good things and those that have control of their mouth, you know what? You're going to have good things. I don't know, but... This is my interpretation of good things. Blessings. You'll have blessings in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes to deal with someone contentious. Nobody likes to deal with someone that's a strifeful. Nobody likes to deal with anyone, either man or woman, that is that way. Look what it says in verse 18, chapter 12 and verse 18. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise, listen to this, I like this, is health. The tongue of the wise is his health. In other words, we can say words that can heal and that can bring healing into other people's lives. Health, good things, blessings. These
These are things that come from good words that are uttered from our mouths, the Bible tells us. We as Christians, as born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, let us learn to speak less and to grow in understanding. Amen? If you'll jump to chapter 17, and I'm going to end with this, chapter 17 and verse 27 and 28. Chapter 17, 27 and 28. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and the man of understanding is of excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. In other words, let us learn to speak less. And let us learn to, to understand more. And think before you answer. Amen? I think that would, that would solve a lot of problems if we thought of the repercussion of our words before we said them. Oh, may God help us. May God help us as born-again believers to get control of our anger and have control of our tongues for the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these wonderful lessons given to us in the book of Proverbs. Lord, there's so much to learn. So many conflicts could be dissolved if we took control of our anger and our tongues. Our families would be more united. Our churches also. Our friendships would be closer. Oh, Father, help us to walk in the ways of your words. May they be a part of our daily living. May we show forth the Lord Jesus Christ, even in the words that we speak, and even in the tone in which we speak them. It's very important, the tone of the words when we give them. Lord, help us to examine ourselves, that we might not be strifeful, that we might not bring bitterness into uh, places that it should not be. Lord, help us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Maybe there's someone, and you're watching this moment. You've never received Christ as your Savior. You need to do that. That's the most important decision you can do in this life. Call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior from this moment on. You see, you can't control your anger on your own. You can't control your vocabulary on your own. You need the help of the Lord in all of this. We need to go forth in the might of His strength. You know, uh, I don't know if you believe it or not, but when I was younger, I had anger issues. Say, Pastor, how could that be? You look to be very calm. Oh, you'd know me when I was younger. And even when I was a younger pastor, I dealt with things I don't think I would deal with them now in that same manner. But you know, as the years go by, we see the repercussion. And we learn by our mistakes. I pray you learn, or you, you can learn also by your mistakes. May you learn, and may you, if you have not received Christ, receive Him now. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I need you. I don't have Christ as my Lord and Savior. It is very evident in the way I live. So right now, I open my heart and I call you to be my Lord and my Savior from this moment on. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. What a good lesson, amen? It's a good lesson. You know, the Proverbs have so many lessons that speaks about finances, 
how to raise your children. It speaks about uh, how to have a good home, sanctity of the home. We're not going to have time to get into all those topics, but they're very good. I would advise you to read through the Proverbs in our daily reading. We want to invite you to come to our services on Sunday. We have uh, live services at 1030 every Sunday. 1030, because we're still having people coming in a little bit late. 1030 on Sunday, and uh, uh, we follow the CDC uh, requirements. And uh, uh, we have face masks and uh, distancing and sanitizers, and we keep the church as clean as we can and try to make things as comfortable as possible. We don't want anybody to get uh, the virus, if at all possible. And so if you're feeling well and you're not high risk, you're welcome to be with us, amen, with the uh, CDC requirements. And we are Temple Heights Baptist Church, 5020 Puritan Road, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Our telephone number, if you'd like to call and let us know if you made a decision, or maybe you have a prayer request, we'd be happy to pray for you. Area code 813-985-5292. Uh, our office hours are open from Monday through Friday, 9 to 2, if you have any questions. If you are a member of our church and you have not been able to come to bring your contributions for the ongoing expenses of our church, you can send your tithes and offerings to our P.O. Box number, Temple Heights Baptist Church, P.O. Box 290-392, Tampa, Florida, 33687. Looking forward to seeing you. We had a wonderful service this last Sunday, and uh, we're praying for those that can't come. We have those that are maybe high risk, and we're praying for those also. But you have a blessed day. You stay healthy. You be victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen.